So, hello everyone, Tim here, and um, this is our first live stream for the Building Products with JavaScript, the desktop edition, let's call it this way. Um, today I want to do an Electron.js setup, prepare our uh, project for development and talk a bit about, you know, what Electron is and how exactly we're going to use it. So in case you don't know, Electron.js is a sort of a mix of... Um, Google Chrome browser or Chromium open source version of it, Node.js and V8 engine. As you can see here, Electron right now is at version 1.6, which is slightly outdated actually with regards to Chromium at least. Uh, as you know, or maybe not know, the latest or current version of um, Chrome is 57, which is latest stable and 58 is coming out quite soon, while uh, Electron is still at 56, but I don't think it's a major disadvantage uh, for us because 57 like the really major things in 57 was um, WebAssembly enabled by default and some performance um, advantages, you know, that's, that's fine. We, we can work with whatever we have. And uh, with regards to Node version, uh, it's like four versions, minor versions behind, which is again, not massively um, lagging, but you know, it's, it should be, should be work. So we, we have a lot of things that uh, we can uh, use there. So quick start guide, let's, go with it why not you know it's always a good idea to quick start so i'm not going to be using any boilerplates or anything like this because we uh generally just want to go uh through it step by step so what we're going to do here is we're going to take this quick start guide and uh walk through it so let's start with package json and see what exactly they are using here so i guess we are actually gonna need to um npm init here or i guess yarn init would be a thing right so it's gonna call it bbgs electron let's call it 0.1.0 this is gonna be um bbgs electron app just like okay that's they should be fine index gs will be entry point we already have the uri that's great we have the author the license and mit and there's our package json so this looks uh, relatively straightforward right so dep dev dependencies, this is what we're gonna add. Um, yarn add development electron. So I'm guessing this is the package that actually uh, contains the electron JS itself along with um, um, different uh, components that are required to run it basically. Uh, and we need the script file, but I guess we should wait until that finishes building it. I'm assuming it's building the, or at least downloading maybe a macOS version of electron. Um, the cool thing about Electron is one, that it's cross-platform. So basically it works equally good on Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. So if you build your app once, you can actually really deploy it on all three major platforms without any major issues, um, unless you use native extensions, but that's a different question. Uh, and number two is that you actually have a unified platform that you can work with. So you may not care about um, bugs that people might have on their own um, versions. Like for example, that works with the browsers, you know, some people might have problems with your code on outdated browsers or different engines like Firefox or whatever. I mean, they are way better now in terms of compatibility because standards, but there are some bugs here and there that often happen. And in case of Electron, you don't have to care about that. You know, as long as it works in your machine, it's gonna work on all other machines, at least within the one operating system. So the compatibility between like Windows and Mac OS is something different that we will talk about uh, later, I guess. But uh, let me plug in the scripts over here, and uh, which means if we do npm start right now, uh, yeah, okay, it's gonna crash because I won't um, actually start anything. So it doesn't seem like we have anything else here. The next thing is uh, index HTML is what we want, right? So I'm gonna go raw here and uh, just copy that. So index HTML, uh, that seems straightforward. So yeah, let's, let's just leave it at hello world for now. So this is the renderer. We don't care about renderer for now. Uh, let's do it this way. Uh, and uh, we, I think the main file is actually the main JS. So let's see the package JSON. I think it's, yeah, it lists the main as uh, entry point. So we're gonna do it raw. And then I am gonna create index JS here. So this file actually, I mean, we can have a look at line by line. 
pretty uh, what was the format i think it's just yeah format document there we go so i'm actually switched to using um prettyfy uh was it prettyfy prettier that's the name of it a uh, very cool formatting um, JavaScript formatter, very close to what GoFMT does uh, for JavaScript, including ESLint rules and everything. So this thing works way better than just about everything I've tried before. And I really like how it works. So um, I think I'm gonna stick with it. I'm probably gonna auto apply it to our project. Um, the one thing I don't like is the fact that it doesn't use commas here, but we're gonna fix it in a moment. So we got that part and I think basically if we do npm start right now, we should get an Electron window that says hello world. We are using Node.js 7.4, Chromium 56 and Electron 162, which is pretty much what we want, right? Um, okay, so we need an ESLint here. Um, so I'm gonna kill that. Now the question is, did I formatted my ESLint for the prettier, yes, I did. Okay, cool. Um, so I'm gonna copy that thing here. There we go. And um, we would need ESLint um, to test that, right? So we need yarn uh, dev ESLint. And I think we would need to add the ESLint pre here and um, some other plugins that are used. Oh, what is going on? my ah, there we go okay um hyper seems still to have problems with long outputs or like immediate long outputs let's put it this way so um let's add the lint target over here and just do es lint um let's do it this way i guess that should be pm run lint right um, what is it? Uh, something went wrong. Yeah, okay, so that's what we need. Yarn add dev plugin prettier. So this is the issue one. Um, do we have any other issues? Uh, can I find model prettier? Yarn add, I guess we just want to run prettier on um, either pre commit or I guess post commit. No, pre commit would be better, right? So we don't want other commit with just code formatting. So I guess setting up some hooks should be nice. Mm. Run lint. Let's see, config pre, wait, I just, didn't I just, ah, there's a plugin and then there's a config. There we go. My cat is going insane behind me, but that's fine. Right, there we go. Uh, follow prettier formatting. Uh, okay, now I think if I run a uh, format right now, there we go. Nice and easy. I really love that about the uh, prettier. So once you configure all your uh, rules, you can really reform it. You can write the document in any way you want and then it will just work. And this is kind of amazing. Cool. And uh, if we do npm start right now, we should actually get our nice window. Yes, perfect. So now the other thing is there is the uh, renderer document, um, which I guess we can. So basically what we want is actually to have the source code one for um, the core, which is this window management and all that kind of stuff. I don't know. I'm not even sure if we would need that, but we'll see. And the other one is we want to have a source for um, for the browser, right? So because this is a different thing. So we can require source index.js so we can do that right uh, we don't need this line here okay um let me think so this this should be now and uh, let just to test it console log hello world right so we're just going to do that and in this case uh, just to see that it actually works we're going to do that and uh, if we do npm start right now there we go, we can actually see the console and we can actually see our hello world, which means our setup working. So let's commit that stuff. Um, git add, I think we can just add everything. Git commit basic electron JS um, setup with ESLint. Did we add anything else? And prettier, right? Prettier, um, there we go. 
Uh, what the hell is this? The, ah, this is um, didn't that, that was supposed to be saved in my keychain. What the hell? Now let me try to remember my passwords. Wait, what? No, wait. Oh, um, I think I know what it wants. Let me do it over here. Um, also, I'm not sure why the hell is it Russian actually. There we go. And um, come on. Yes, another macOS update screwed up something. Um, so I need my key base key, right? This is what it wants. Saving keychain, yes. There we go. Um, okay, cool. So we got that down. Um, now, uh, we got the slint. We got, uh, we don't need that anymore. We don't need that for now. So now we need to set up the um, the client side, right? So from what you guys said in the comments to my last video, you actually wanted to see React.js more, and that's exactly what we are gonna do. Um, like, okay, so I guess we are just gonna go with the same uh, React setup we did. Uh, no, wait, that is, Oh, I actually cloned it into my home folder, which is a bit unfortunate. Um, let's go to projects. There we go. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to have a look at our um, building projects with GS uh, part and take the client side bits, which is yarn odd. So we need react, we need react DOM. We need react through. Um, okay, let's let's start simple right so we're gonna just use react and react dom for now and um yes so this is going to be the direct dependencies and then we're going to use that pack i guess for um actually loading and handling the source code right not dev web pack um what do we need for web pack so let me think uh web pack config so in this case, yeah, we would need style loader. We would need, do we want to use Babel? I mean, the thing, like the one of the coolest things about um, Electron is that we're using the latest environments. So we can basically ditch Babel because it already has a sync of eight and most of the features of the um, ES Next. So I guess we would need what URL loader, style loader, CSS loader. That's That's it, right? Um, so let's go CSS, ah, da, 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 da. CSS loader, mm, let me sing file loader. No, we don't need file loader anymore. I think it was deprecated, right? So we got URL loader, uh, URL loader and uh, style loader is what we want. Uh, there we go. Now, and we want the webpack config. Mm, so we are gonna create it here, webpack config JS. Okay, um, do we need pay? Yeah, let's, let's use path as well. So this is one of the actually uh, requirements of using Electron on multiple platforms is that we actually want to use um, path resolution that is built into Node.js because as you might know, the backslashes won't work or slashes actually won't work on um, Windows, for example, right? It wants backslash there. So, um, pre uh, no, God, come on, format. Format, I said, there we go. Cool. So we don't need that Babel loader. It's not something we want. Uh, although, I mean, there's this React Optimize presets. Mm, do we want to use that? Oh, I'm, screw it. We don't want to use it for now. Just go with URL loaders. Yeah, that looks fine. So we got the CSS here. Now, um, mm hmm. So now here's an interesting moment. Um, Electron, React, and Webpack. So the, the thing is that normally Webpack serves the files from the uh, server, right? So the question is how exactly does that work with um, Electron? Because I mean, theoretically, we can set up the server on the back end, but that does not sound very productive. Uh, render dev. Yeah, okay, so what do they do here? Merge, chalk, okay, that all seems straightforward. Target, electron renderer. 
uh, entry point yeah okay so you can use the hot reloading here as well which is nice uh, CSS okay SAS that's boring that's not what we need okay um, dev server they really use the server that sounds a bit a bit backwards uh, it's a bunch of notifications that I'm not interested in um, writing code okay so this is our blah 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 webpack node module dev server so basically they suggest to index yeah okay this is the main window and yeah they really suggest using the local host okay that is a bit I mean I guess for development that is fine but I would have to to read a bit more on that because I don't like that approach. I mean, that means that, you know, if the port 8080 is taken in your local system, then you're screwed because you cannot start a server over there, uh, which is suboptimal as you might imagine. Uh, but I guess we could go with that. So we got the webpack config. We got, um, I guess then we can just use our um, surf file from here, right? So we can just use the express again that that seems so backward i don't like it let's see what else can we do uh, i mean if i want to have a hot reload we would actually need a server anyway so i guess i guess that's like one of like literally one good way of doing that uh, it might not be too bad um what come on what wait it's still installing it what the hell is it just my hyper went crazy uh i uh, i'm not sure let let me kill it come on okay now it's dead uh the question is did it install everything and uh, this is yarn i need package json no it didn't okay that is a bit unfortunate um there you go yarn add dev yes please now this time without crashing that would be really nice Okay, cool. So, um, what do we want to do? So this is our index.js and uh, like the question is, actually, do we need a webpack? So, I mean, I guess we could start without it because theoretically the require actually works uh, as is, right? Because this is like the, the we are talking uh, Node.js um i guess we can start without i'm just thinking you know like the on one hand we're gonna we can have a bundle in the end that would reduce the loading times and increase the speed overall on the other hand we can actually just say um require react const react dom right uh react dom and um we're gonna be lazy and copy our stuff from here. So I'm gonna just take this and uh, in this case, I am just gonna say uh, diff diff um, h1 hello world, right? Okay, uh, yeah, format, there we go. And then we need the index HTML. We need to add this div ID app, right? Okay, and now if we start it, I think that should work. Come on, I know you're there. Uh, unexpected token. Oh yeah, because we are doing JSX, which is, um, right. I mean, we can do that without JSX, but that will be a bit disappointing. Uh, come on, let me let me try to think of something good here. <clears throat> like using something like Rollup might be, or Browserify might be a solution. But uh, I guess what we will have to set <laughs> we'll have to set up the Webpack. Okay, that is a bit unfortunate, but uh, I guess we will have to serve the files from the server. Um, so basically have like a basically client server application here, right? So 
serve js let's let's roll it with this way so kill it here I mean which means we can just repeat the whole um, thing from here now let me see um, simplify it we don't need extract plugin for now we don't need lodash we go with webpack config yes uh, config define environment api host so we don't care about that uh process environment okay i mean I, I can skip formatting because we have the prettier now production uh so we can actually skip the production environment for now because it's going to be a development for quite some time and before we actually do optimizations we should um figure out if our proof of concept actually works right so we're gonna start small all right entry for hood reloads there we go uh, okay, this is the production tweaks, which mean we can kill them. And uh, here we go. So hot hot reloads, kill that, and format, and it's all pretty now. Cool. So we did that. What do you know, like about this? What is this? Follow prettier format expected, but found n. But you should have formatted this for me. There we go. Okay, um, we did that, which means we need the webpack config. And again, we can just take this from here. Um, I guess let's use Babel, but we don't really. Um, so there is the new Babel preset, right? The, um, uh, what was it? Babel env, I think. Yes, auto prefixer for Babel. So there's, if you haven't heard, there's this uh, Babel Enf, Babel preset Enf new thing that we can just say, you know, we are gonna support the following things, like last two versions of browsers, Safari, whatever. I, I believe the Electron as well can be a target, and it will automatically polyfill whatever um, things you want. Instead, like unless uh, it's in a in a stage not in production basically right so the idea is that if, if you're using latest then it will only include the required plugins for the current environment and if you want stages whatever you can include it manually so this is what we're gonna do um we are gonna have react and then uh i think it should be just n right yeah so yarn at dev meet webpack uh, we're gonna have a bunch of dependencies here so express um, dev middleware, hot middleware. I think this is it from this file. Then uh, from here we need style loader and bleh, come on, CSS loader. Um, we need Babel loader. And then we need a bunch of presets, Babel preset env. Babel preset react, Babel preset, do I want to use stage zero? What's actually in the stage? Yeah, I haven't checked the stage zero for ages now. There should be some more stuff in there now that actually we probably need in here. Um, let me see, packages, polyfill, setup. Oh, where do they have the stages description now? Um, Learn, learn is that where you have them now? Um, no. Come on, Babel, Babel Core plugins. Ah, here we go. Uh, and latest stage zero, one, two, three. Okay, so stage zero includes what? Do expressions and function bind. Uh, not something I use that often, so we can skip that. Class constructor call, which is deprecated anyway, and export extensions, which can be useful, but... Mm, uh, syntax dynamic imports, we don't need that. Class properties, that might be useful for us. Um, disable pending proposal update, okay, decorators got changed again. Rest spread, async generator function. Uh, yeah, so again, I mean, like, why the hell not? Let's just go with stage zero, I don't care. Um, stage zero. 
um, plugins uh, transform so there's going to be Babel plugin uh, transform runtime and uh, we can skip the Lodash for now because I'm not even sure if we're going to use that and then Babel uh, preset react uh, hot reload and Babel preset react optimize right I think that's it Okay. Okay, theoretically, if we do node surf, it should actually start. Um, blah, 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 web back and valid object. Wait, did it actually? Oh, I didn't save it. Okay. Uh, format this thing. There we go. Looks much better now. And uh, let's try that again. Cool. Yes. Uh, Babel core, uh -huh. I forgot something. Um, yarn odds def Babel core. I think after that it should theoretically work. Okay, node surf. Again, this parse query thing. I'm not even sure what this is about. No, let me, let me, nah, ugh, God, no. No, I don't, don't stop. There we go. Please open it in the browser. Mm. There we go. Come over here. Process deprecation. Yeah, so what, what is this complaint about? Does it even says cache directory? Is it about cache directory? Uh, modules true cache. In, I mean, there's no way I can disable that. Rules, da, whatever. I mean, it works. For now, it works until it starts throwing errors. I have no idea what what it complains about. So this compiles successfully, which means in this case, um, yeah. Once again, we have the limitation that is going to be on port three thousand, but um, right. So here, create a window and. Uh, serve we just require it right we don't have uh, maybe it's a good idea to actually export it so let's do it this way model exports um function so there's going to be a function that just creates all of that and starts and then in our index uh this is create window mm -hmm. on app ready yes so create window and then we are gonna be requiring our own thing uh, let me just restructure this real quick let's do it this way this is gonna be npm packages and this is gonna be our packages um right so start server um require serve maybe we'll restructure the app a bit later um, just a tiny bit then here we are going to do start server, right? So this is going to kick off uh, start uh, webpack server. And uh, in this case, in index.js, where's my, uh, well, let me think, we need to actually say this and okay, we don't do CSS yet, which means that this should be, um, HTTP local host uh, 3000 dist admin G I believe so right so um, npm start and let's see if that actually works yes uh, target container is not a DOM element did I eh, I removed the app thing from here okay div id app there we go so if I restart the whole thing now And it works, perfect. Uh, file, why do you access file here? What the hell? Okay, HMR is a bit broken for whatever reason. Uh, that is a bit weird. Now the question is why does it try to, oh, is it because the index.js is um, actually served from, okay, so basically, 
do we want to say want to completely use a, um, a server for for serving everything right so the idea would be let's command that protocol HTTP um, localhost no I mean okay we don't actually need that here right so we can just say that comment out this thing and then just say HTTP localhost 3000 index HTML um, command this out and uh, let's try that am I doing this correctly now there we go yeah there we go so now we actually have um, reload which should work no it doesn't okay because we have the um, stateless component right now is a, is a root same issue as before but I believe we can do yeah control R and just refresh the whole thing cool so we can actually kill that and I believe we should be able to just paste it over here remove that comment there we go and uh, if I refresh we should uh, right because it doesn't actually have access to the process from within the loaded um, thing so we actually would have to set up the bridges and stuff but that's fine so we now have set up the react with uh, webpack and with express.js for serving it which is I think fine so we can kill that part because we don't need it anymore we would have to figure out how to later uh, deploy it with I don't know like do we want to actually deploy it with a server along the way I'm not sure if that's the best way of doing that it would be interesting to dig in a bit into the um, apps like um, VS Code for example to see how they do that because I mean you you need to have some server because some of the things can only be done from the node.js side and there's like there is a way to communicate but it's a bit um, iffy let's call it this way Okay, let's see. Uh, yeah, so we added this stuff. Git add git commit uh, setup um, add basic react and webpack uh, setup. And um, yeah, I think I mean so there is this react boilerplate and I think they do pretty much the same as far as I understood. So we have the setup JS here. Uh, okay, those are some cleaning functions. No, what is the uh, what? What's up with my mouse? My batteries died. Come on, mouse work. There we go. Um, package JSON was the entry file for there. Um, close that stuff. Uh, main JS. Okay, so what is main JS? Where is it actually? I don't see any main JS here, which is a bit weird okay um app maybe is it here yeah there you go main development and then i guess there's going to be a main non-development right so source map support we don't care about that right now we don't care about there's yeah there's a pretty nice electron debug package but we don't care about that right now either extensions window closed window ready so they install extensions they okay they use actually file here so how the hell does that actually works what is the app html i'm a bit curious on how the other people do that essentially mm, okay that is writing script should be done with webpack I, that, that's a very curious way why the hell okay so it's not if it's not hot reload okay i see uh development script okay it's definitely basically hot yeah okay oh, okay so that's how they do this either if it's in development mode they just inject the um hot reload versions or if it's not they use the bundle that is pre-built i guess we'll, we'll end up with something among those lines in the end as well but uh yeah this is basic setup i mean i guess we can just plug in the react router as well because why not uh there was a new version released recently uh which i don't remember if we updated the uh, previous app for it but hey let's um where's the docs here yes this is what i want uh web thank you very much quick quick start guide no no i don't want to create react app i want manual setup 
um, that does not help me a lot. Um, server and ring splitting basic. Okay. Really, you just removed the setup guide because there is React Create App. That is not very helpful. I mean, React Create App is kind of cool, but there's times when I just want to set it up myself, you know. Okay, yarn odd react router and react router dom. Save that. Um, okay, um, yeah, I guess we're gonna do that. That's not what we want. Uh, do, 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 do. I mean, I guess I can just copy it from our old code. Uh, it should be quite similar. No, don't save that. Um, mm -hmm. There we go. Um, now the question is here, which React Router version did we use? Uh, three, okay, so this is actually old. Uh, yeah, I guess now the, the docs, web, yarn, add React Router DOM. Wait, do we only need DOM? We don't need the other one. Um, let's try that. Remove React Router, is that the thing? So we only need the DOM version of it and uh, let's try that. So we got our index. Yeah, we can actually switch to using import statements again. From this part, uh, there we go. So, and then Router, in this case, uh, And we actually need like home JS or something. Um, export default. So let's just make it um, stateless component. And then we can create other JS just for the sake of it. Other page. Um, home other. Uh, so we're going to do other so other and this is going to be other and then we just need to import our import home from home right and import other from other uh, no other there we go and now i just do format and it all becomes very pretty um Follow pretty formatting expected, but found B. Um, that is, um, do you want a line break here or what? No, you don't. I'm not sure. I mean, you know what? I can just do that. And that should work fine. I'm not sure why would you rename it, but hey. Okay. Um, yeah, no, right. Okay, npm start. Why does it always asks? Uh, and uh, um, re oh, right, I completely forgot to uh, import React here, of course. There we go. Uh, this is one, and this is two. And now if we restart that, Damn it, I wonder if there's a way to allow it to do it, what? Oh, I guess there's no um, path. Yes, uh, okay, how do I say default? Component render, blah, blah, blah. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Come on, where's default roots? Let me see, browser root, hash router, link, red rag root, there we go. Uh, is there a way to say default? Root props, match location, history, path, no. Um, default, get user confirmation, key length props. Really? Oh, come on. Yeah, 
scooter. Let's see. Um, yes, I don't want that anymore. Pa okay, they now split into packages. DOM docs API root. Yeah, um, seriously. Default. There's no default. Okay. That's a bit discouraging. Uh, router root redirect prompt. Maybe it's on, on the router now. Um, no. Oh, I guess if we actually just change it to this, it should be a, again, stop, start. That should start working, right? Allow, there we go. Okay, so now we actually have the basic React Router set up. Um, I think that is actually sufficient for the first part. Uh, maybe let's refactor the code a bit to, I can still, I don't understand what the hell don't you like here. So let me see npm run lint. This complains as well. Follow prettier formatting, expect it, uh, but be found. You want the space bar here? Ah, okay, but why doesn't your format? Okay, I guess my ESLint is wrong. Trading comma, single quote. Um, prettier ESLint plugin, yes. Um, what are the config options here? Trading comma, single quote. Uh, ESLint config prettier. Do, 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 React flow type. Uh, max link, no confusing arrow, no mixed operators, quotes. Okay, wait a second, prettier, prettier. That is a weird inconsistency. Oh wait, maybe it's the config of my um, to the, the user settings. Um, let me see, prettier, bracket spacing, false. This Is this what we wanna add here? Um, bracket spacing false, is that the thing? Format, okay. There we go, okay. So it was just a missing line. Um, that's actually be good to add to my ESLint C as well because I do not like that bracket spacing. There we go. Cool, uh, now slide code. Uh, code structure refactoring pages and home and other and then let's just do that now if we do npm start that should still be working yes allow i really need to figure out how to turn the thing off in the mac os why does it keep rebuilding the bundle what the hell okay that seems to be working so git commit add basic react the react router setup um and um, i think we are pretty much ready to start building the app itself right because we have the uh, electron setup we have the react setup and along with the router so we can use different pages so we only have three pages or something here so not that much I'm thinking, am I missing something? Um, let me think. Da, 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 da. My drive, come on, uh, YouTube, Electron, um, let me think. So layouts, this is easy, this is just pages, so plugins. This is something we can do later. This is something we can do later. Yeah, that seems, seems to me that we are all set for the starting. So I guess I can just um, do the first video covering whatever we did here right now. And then after that, we can start um, coding the actual app. So uh, let me push that and we can, we can wrap it up for today. Great, close that, make sure it's live.
Yes, there we go. 12 minutes ago. Perfect. So um, I guess that will be it. Thank you for watching and I see you either during the next live stream or um, during the next video. Bye.